This is the service for February 18th, 2024. It is the first Sunday of Lent. We're going to use Divine Service Setting 2, but we're going to start with Hymn 743, Jesus, Priceless Treasure. We're just going to do verses 1 through 4. So 743, verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> Jesus, priceless treasure, font of purest pleasure, truest friend to me. Ah, how long in anguish shall my spirit languish, yearning, Lord, for thee. Thou art mine, O Lamb divine, I will suffer not to hide thee, not I ask beside thee. In thine arms I rest me, foes who would molest me, cannot reach me here. Though the earth be shaking, every heart be quaking, Jesus, calm my fear. Lightnings flash and thunders crash, Yet the sin and hell assail me, Jesus will not fail me. Satan, I defy thee, death I now decry thee, fear I bid thee cease. World, thou shalt not harm me, nor thy threats alarm me, while I sing of peace. God's great power guards every hour, earth and all its depths adore him. Silent bow before him. Hence all earthly treasure, Jesus is my pleasure, Jesus is my choice. Hence all empty glory, not to me thy story, told with tempting voice, pain or loss or shame or cross, shall not from my Saviour move me, since he deigns to love me. We turn to page 167. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, 
I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with Psalm 25, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and seek me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We turn to 168. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We turn to 172. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the first Sunday of Lent, is from Genesis chapter 22. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham! And he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father? And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, 
Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, The Lord Will Provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore, and your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from James chapter 1. It serves as the basis of our sermon. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of firstfruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the Lenten verse on 173. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the voice descending on him like a dove. I'm sorry, and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And the voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. The spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. 
This is the word of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day is hymn 707, O oh, that the Lord would guide my ways. O oh, that the Lord would guide my ways to keep his statute still. Oh, that my God would grant me grace to know and do his will. Order my footsteps by thy word and make my heart sincere. Let sin have no dominion, Lord, but keep my conscience clear. Assist my soul to have to stray, a stricter watch to keep. And should I e'er forget thy way, Restore thy wandering sheep. Make me to walk in thy commands, Tis a delightful road. Nor let my head or heart or hands Offend against my God. Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha, he thought he had diagnosed the problem of the world. He said the problem is desire. And if he could cut off all desires, then he could reach nirvana, the state when he didn't want for anything because he didn't want anything. Well, Siddhartha had it half right. The problem is coveting. The problem is desire. According to James, it is our desires which lead to sin. It is that we are not content with the gifts God has given, the place where God has placed us, the things that God would have us do. That we are placed in a world that is full of sin and troubles, and this world puts before our eyes things that we would think are good. Things that our hearts would come after. After all, that's what happened to Adam and Eve when they looked on the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They desired it. They coveted what was not given for them to eat. Because Satan had lied to them and told them it would make them be like God. and They thought that was a positive thing. So Siddhartha has it right that desire leads to sin, but not all desire. There are good desires. God had Adam look at the animals and say, are any of these a good companion for you? The answer was no. But then God created for him from his very own rib, Eve, a woman, a perfect complement for Adam, he being a perfect complement for her. And the two looked upon each other with desire. And it was good, for man should not be alone. By man here, I mean both man and woman. It is good that they have a companion, a helpmate. One who can take their aspects and complement it with their aspects. The desires God gives are good desires. The desire for a child. The desire for a family. The desire for work. It's a good desire. The desire to achieve in your work and become someone who can affect the world in larger and better ways. Who can grow the gifts that God has stewarded to you. After all, when Jesus tells the parable of the stewards, 
he approves and he acknowledges that the ones who expanded their talents, the things given them by God, they were blessed by God even more. And God praised them for the good that they had done. It is the one who showed a desire for what wasn't of God, a desire to avoid God and avoid punishment. That was the one that was disapproved of. Disapprobation. And so Buddha has it half right. Desire when it comes from us, when it is of our sinful nature, of that original problem of pride, those desires lead to all the problems of the world. That's why we have two commandments at the end that deal with coveting. Some put those two together, which is a reasonable thing to do. But in our church, we keep the two apart as they're listed apart in the Bible. We say, don't covet a neighbor's house, don't covet a neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, etc. It's because those desires, those coveting, those wanting things which are not our own, those lead to the other sins. Those lead to adultery and theft and murder and destroying someone's reputation. And our desire to be like God leads to the sins of not coming to God, not being part of the fellowship of believers, not learning of the desires of God. And so James tells us that God doesn't tempt us. He hits us in places of trial like he did with Abraham, but he doesn't lead us to evil. With Abraham, he stopped him, so he would not do evil. Rather, God uses those temptations to open our eyes to what is our desires and what is God's desires. He has us going through times of difficulties so we can distinguish between what are things we want what are things God guides us to? Oh Lord, that you would guide our ways. It is in God that we find the good desires. And so it's necessary that we learn of God that we who once were created with a conscience that followed naturally in those desires now, after our sin, have to come to God's revelation so that we can know what good desires are. We have to come and we have to see that Christ died on the cross and rose, and that God desired that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth so that we can realize that we are saved children of God, but so should be everyone else. And so it is God's desire that we as a people train up our young to know Jesus Christ, encourage each other in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and take that knowledge out to our community to share the love of Jesus Christ. This is God's desire. This is good. This is the contentment that Paul wrote about when he said, I have found the secret of being content in all things. It is the contentment of knowing that God has good desires and that Paul has been given by the Holy Spirit the ability to follow those good desires, to do things which produce the good results that God wants. It is in scripture that we learn that God desires for us to work. It's as we go through James or we go through Proverbs that we learn many aphorisms of things that God desires. How he desires a household where there is discipline, both discipline in the sense of punishment, but also discipline in the sense of order 
of building people up through a certain set of activities so that they might learn the desires of God and be better able to achieve them. God's desires change who we are. And as we come to his revelation, that is, as we come to his word, to the holy scriptures, and as we receive his gifts, the holy sacraments, it changes our desires to lie in line with his desires so that we can better walk in a way which achieves those desires. Now those outside the church look at that and say, hey, aren't you becoming an automaton, a robot, something controlled by God? And the answer to that is no and yes. No, really, we, should, we have free will. What free will actually means is that our will, our mind, our rationality, our soul starts doing the things which produce good results. Those are the things that I desire when I'm in a proper love of Christ. And so I start doing the things for God. And the way we are kind of like, you know, controlled by God, slaves to God, is that, yeah, God influenced the world and influences us to produce places where we can work and get good results. Where we can work with our desires now in line with God to achieve beautiful things. Churches that grow, families that love, children who have good training. Because our desires have been tamed and tempered and they have been bridled by God so that now they produce a straight path for the harvest. You know, we've been hooked up to the plow and we're producing good furrows so that the seeds might grow and God's kingdom might expand. When James tells us God indeed tempts no one, he's telling us that as we come to God and receive his gifts, as we act according to those gifts given, there will always be good that comes about because of it. It may not always be pleasant. It may not always in the moment have a good result. So let's take for instance, oh, I don't know, Jesus' death on the cross. Highly unpleasant. In the moment, it was the death of our Savior but ultimately, it was the salvation of the world. And so Jesus, his desires lay with God. Our gospel text talks about his temptation where he doesn't ever get away from God's desires. Even though his body is saying, this is bad, I'm starving. Even though his mind is saying, this is bad, I'm going to have to go against the rulers of the world. Even though his soul is saying, this is bad, I'm going to be separated briefly from my father. He went with God's desire. And the result, as we know, is our peace, our eternal hope. So, desire, our own desire, yeah, Buddha was right, it's bad. But the desire of God, the desire that is created in us by our baptism, by our becoming a part of Christ, that's good. Let us learn more of the desires of our Lord so that we too can achieve the things that God has set for us so that we too can bring other children to know God's good plan. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have changed our desires from the sinful urgings of our flesh and brought them in line with your desires. Lord, we know that there are daily temptations and struggles and so we pray as we do in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but as those temptations come, let us respond like Christ did. Let us tell Satan the truth of your revelation, the words of Scripture properly understood. And let us remember that we live by you, not by bread, and then go about our lives living according to your plans and your design. Let that be the desire of our heart, that your love continue in us and it grow in others. Lord, we pray for our nation, for our leaders, for our parents, and those who watch over our bodies. Lord, we pray for all those who are ill and in need. Lord, we ask that you watch over all these things and give them the desires that you have set rather than let them be led astray by the own, their own desires of a sinful heart. All this we pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we join in his prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing our praise of God with hymn 805, the doxology, Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. We turn to 183. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Going to close with him 809 great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness O God my father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, 
shining, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Go in the peace of the Lord. Amen.